All right. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Saturday morning uh, for our conversation open house on what does it mean to hold space. Um, before we begin, I will just share a little about just being centered about Sandy, who is here with us today, and uh, about the flow of our week, of our time today. So Just Being Centered is an organization working in mental health uh, since 2011. The work is largely around mindfulness. Um, so mindfulness-based training, programs, and events, um, with also a lens of compassion and um, a belief in the inner wisdom um, of all of us uh, is brought into the work. And Sandy, she is the founder and director of Just Being Center. And she has over 20 years of experience in the field. She is internationally certified in MBCT, which is Mindfulness-Based Cognitive Therapy. And she is uh, also the designer of our course, Mindfulness-Based Counseling, Listening with Embodied Presence. So uh, welcoming Sandy uh, and our other alumni who are joining here today as well into this space. Uh, I will also briefly share about our flow of uh, the next one, one and a half hours that we are here. So we'll first hear from Sandy a little about uh, the course. She will tell us uh, what it means to hold space and how that shows up in our learning uh, in the mindfulness-based counseling course. After that, we will hear from our alumni here. We have Sara. Manisha, Rahul, and Priya here with us today. Um, and then we will open this space up for Q&A, any questions that you have for Sandy or the alumni, uh, in, or any other questions also you have, you can just share it here, and uh, we'll have an open conversation on it. So I would like to welcome Sandy to share a little on what, what does it mean to hold space? Yeah, thank you, Kushali. And uh, yeah, welcome to everyone um, here. And uh, also it's lovely to see, uh, see all of you, Sara, Manisha, Rahul, Priya. Um, thank you all for joining in. Um, so Kushali has already given us an overview of what we do at Just Being, which, uh, you know, the primary intention is, of course, Just Being. Uh, and uh, the pathway to, uh, to that is through mindfulness and through uh, coming into our sense of presence. And so the courses that we offer also revolve around that. It is, uh, there are two courses that we offer. Today, we have an open house about the one-year diploma, which we run in academic collaboration with St. Mira's College. And um, it's been uh, quite, um, quite a rewarding journey to have this uh, academic collaboration with them over all these years. And we are about to begin, um, you know, the next cohort. And we've just finished, in fact, uh, last week, um, the last year's badge just finished their last module and they are in the stage of completing. They are, uh, you know, all the remaining assignments that they have. So the intention of the one year program, the mindfulness based uh, counseling, listening with embodied presence, is largely it really uh, came together with the intention that you know we do not have we do not have very many spaces for people to simply share and uh, be be supported in their sharing uh, we don't have 
um, those many also mental health professionals who are trained in this. And so to bridge this space uh, that is very much there and present, um, this program is open to um, to even those who don't have a psychology background, even those who are just starting out, but, but who do have an inclination uh, towards holding space for others. Uh, they, somewhere in your being, you do know how to do it. You may, uh, but you may not be so uh, clear about what that means. And uh, so the whole program, which is also open to uh, psychology students and also to professionals, um, and very many choose to do the one year program and find it extremely beneficial. And the reason why the professionals also find it very, very beneficial is because this is the fundamentals of counseling. This is not just the fin fundamentals as in basics, it is the very ground on which we are uh, we are working so irrespective of modality irrespective of what we do this is the ground on which we kind of come into contact with the other and then when we do that in this way uh, which is as a facilitator as a listener as a counselor being very very present in oneself very very present to the other and just going moment to moment with this whole process then um, the deepest knowledge and wisdom of uh, the other person that's allowed to come forth and that actually guides the process so the training is really about being rooted in oneself uh, being able to really attune to the other in a very embodied way. Um, and, uh, and these are not skills and techniques that we can learn from reading about it. This has to be experienced. The more we have it, the more we know how to give it to others. And so the whole course is really about coming into that experience, um, really knowing it almost in our bones by the time it is, uh, you know, we are through with the course uh, of or having a flavor of it at least that what does it mean to really be there for the other. So I will open it up to uh, you know people who have done the course and who have been through the whole process. Uh, some of them have done it some years back. Some of them have done it more recently. And uh, and really, what we have done today is also call people from different uh, streams and where um, they are applying it in different areas. Um, so, um, and they've also come from different, uh, you know, uh, from different orientations and uh, different uh, areas of uh, work and life. Uh, and yet, uh, the course is uh, beneficial to and finds application in all aspects. Uh, so we're really working with the foundational and the elemental aspects of what it means to hold space, which can then be applied to various uh, areas of life and work. Okay, so that's it from me. I will be here for any questions uh, later on that you have about the course. Yeah, yeah, Kushali. Thank you, Sandy, for taking us through and giving us a brief overview of the course. Um, so I'd first like to invite Sarah Mehdi. Uh, she is a mindfulness and presence-oriented therapy practitioner. Um, and the most interesting part about Sarah's journey is that she was a student of the course and now she is a supervisor uh, as well in the course. So uh, Sarah would love to hear about 
that transition, how it has been for you and how uh, learnings from the course are helping you in your therapy practice. Yeah, thank you for Shali. Uh, am I audible? Just wanting to check clearly. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. There is so much that I can say about this course. Um, I, I feel like it's not an exaggeration when I say that it has changed the course of my life because before this, I was actually pursuing music for two years and then I happened to come across this course and because it is so immersive, I feel like it really um, transformed me as a person, made me come much more in touch with myself and much more in connection with the world. Um, so just a little bit about like um, the learnings and what I, um, I don't know how, where to start because it's like there's so much that I've received from this course. Um, so I was a part of the 2019-2020 batch and um, thankfully this was my first, one of my first training experiences into the field of psychology and mindfulness. So this is where I began the journey. Before that, I had experienced Vipassana meditation and I always felt that, you know, I wish I could bring the benefits of that to people somehow. And this course really just came in as a perfect way to combine my spiritual practice and also holding space, learning to hold space for others as an extension of that practice. Um, and while I had earlier practiced mindfulness on and off, um, I feel like this course gave me a much more systematic way to um, learn mindfulness in the whole of its essence. Earlier, before that, before I came across this course, I always thought that mindfulness was a way to calm myself down, which honestly was what drew me to the course. But uh, in the course, I learned how it could um, be this way to develop an awareness that permeates all of life experiences and can enrich enrich my life and um, also develop my capacity to be with my difficult experiences, especially because I've always had this experience of anxiety. And um, I still remember there was one module where we were practicing um, one of the practices of mindfulness and I had this huge anxious uh, energy and like this palpitation and all of that was happening and then Sandy invited us to um, sense into a place of okayness in the body and that was like my first ever experience of oh there is a place in my body that also feels okay and it was like this yeah there was this noticing that yes there can be this anxiety and then there can be this okayness and how that built this capacity for me to be able to be with my anxiety and then how while of course calming down happen can happen as a byproduct of the practice it really helped me go deeper into my experience of the anxiety and then build my relationship with anxiety and also come in touch with what I needed uh, and because I experienced all of this myself I could bring it to my clients and I could trust the process much more because there was this personal experience of, you know, like I gave you this example, there was this throughout the course, there were these moments. Um, and also I had this experiential understanding like Sandy was talking about, you know, this very experiential understanding of what it truly means to listen and how it could take so many layers of like learning and unlearning to arrive at this place of being open being receptive to the other person without having to fix or to change them in any way, which then naturally allows for an unfolding of their process. And um, that helped me a lot personally and professionally, both to be a good listener. Um, and as far as the post work was concerned, I feel like um, it was so beautifully designed for us to, uh, like it was an inside out learning. So 
it was always about first embodying the practice learning with the peers seeing how it feels to be listened to to listen and then bringing it to clients and i think the small group format also really allows like 20 19 20 people really just allows for the group learning to happen where there are these reflections check ins observations deep breaths um it it almost like it's a it's the cohort itself becomes like a learning ground and there's like a community learning that is facilitated because everyone comes from such rich backgrounds and everybody contributes so the richness really emerges a lot also from the group um then there were these assignments that were really fun to engage with there were these movie reviews and uh things like that which which were also quite inventive um one of the things that really stood out for me was during the modules the sense of safety that was created that really allowed for my authentic experience to come forth and it was one of the first experiences for me to feel safe in a group which i often struggled with um and i feel like that was a very healing experience for me and i also realized how a lot of the work was relational because of that experience um that, that was what then i was able to bring to my clients in my work as well um and um yeah and i feel like mindfulness based uh, counseling is the base of my work it's like uh, the foundation for me deep listening and holding embodied presence are the intentions that i hold in all my sessions and i feel like that just takes care of the process um also it, it that's what also i learned in the course in, uh, itself that my own inner work was really crucial to um be able to hold spaces for others and the importance of personal counseling peer exchange all of that really allowed me to meet myself more and more deeply that then allowed me to meet my clients more deeply um yeah and then like kushali was asking uh, i have this habit of like going for the longer way to the answer so don't mind that but yeah like she was asking this whole you know this experience of uh, being a student and being an assistant being a supervisor was really enriching and it was it was very interesting how sandy has designed even those structures in a way that they all embody the learnings of the course so even when you're assisting even when you're supervising you're still holding the very same stance that we hold in a listening space and it's just like in different contexts so what it really did for me that it it really concretized the learnings for me a lot and allowed me to really offer whatever i could with that stance so really grateful to sandy for trusting me with that and i hope to be a part of this course in whatever way i can um because it really really means a lot to me and yeah yeah thank you i think that's all from my side i hope to see some of you join the course and experience it for yourselves thank you sara for sharing your journey and the insights and the transition that this course brought into your life as well um and what i heard was that the feeling of safety created in the relational experience uh, is what help you bring in the same in your practice uh well um yeah thank you once again now i would like to uh, invite priya prabhakaran she is a yoga teacher among many other things <laughs> that she does and uh, would love to hear from you priya how listening in a movement based uh, work comes in comes into the picture thank you kusha <laughs> and hi everyone thank you for offering me this space to be heard about this part of my life uh, i've been teaching yoga since 2011 
but I've also I'm also the current trainings coordinator of uh, Just Being, and uh, it's just like I felt like there was so much I received from the program, and I wasn't ready to let go. And this is kind of the way I continue <laughs> that. Um, yeah, so just to presence the fact that uh, I think Sarah also mentioned this. Um, feeling a bit anxious in groups and that's something I experience quite often and um, as a yoga teacher invited to teach more groups and especially women's support groups which is something very close to my heart but very quickly I realized that I needed a lot of support for myself as a practitioner as a teacher to be able to re really be present with uh, with the groups I was with. And so the content of my classes were relatively the same, but the groups that were coming in had a lot of varying needs. And I wanted to learn how to be more attuned to each of the groups and to be sort of responsive and adaptive to, to these groups. And I shared this with a friend and uh, she had just completed the MBC program the year before that. And she said, this is it. This is uh, the space for you. you. You should enroll. You should apply for it. And that's how I arrived at the listening program. And from the very first module, the level of safety and belonging and just welcoming of all parts of me that I experienced um, being in the group was so so rare and so precious that uh, I knew I had made the right decision right there. And uh, I remember just being in awe of Sandy and just watching her whole space for all of us. And uh, especially in new groups, it, it comes with a lot, a lot emerges. And it's just been incredible watching Sandy and the uh, teaching assistant's whole space for everything that was there and um, and progressively with each module uh, without even really knowing it we were we were starting to embody those qualities as well and that's really I think what Sandy said in the beginning we received what we needed to share as well and that's uh, that's just something I really take back from the program and uh, it's a value that I hold in all the spaces that I, I share and I co-create as well, just to offer this welcoming space so that people really feel received and okay to be themselves in their bodies. And the aspect of the embodied presence um, part of the program uh, as a yoga teacher, as a body worker, and somebody really uh, who enjoys movement is, is just central to that. Another thing that um, in my early years as a student of yoga, I had different experiences in just the postures or in some of the yoga practices that I didn't know how to verbalize or hold space for myself. Um, for example, in my first year, um, I used to uh, go to these classes, group classes in Bangalore. And uh, we'd have a beautiful practice session. And at the very end, we'd do the body scan. We'd do the yoga nidra. And the teacher would switch off the lights and uh, guide us through the practice. And I started getting in touch with parts of myself that I'd never experienced before. And with that came emotions as well. Lots of different sensations. And... I didn't really know if all this was okay or if my experience was just uh, <laughs> just something unique and only I was going through this. And I felt quite alone in that experience. And it was after I started teaching and I started seeing that other people were having similar experiences and they were coming to me after class and saying, hey, uh, is this okay? I realized the need for having more listening spaces embedded within the structure of our uh, sessions itself. So that's, uh, that's also just something I wanted to share that being a good listener and 
being able to hold space for others and just the values of okayness, of wholeness, and this uh, non-pathologizing um, aspect that the, uh, the course really uh, holds central. It's been very, very special to me. Yeah, that's, and that's something that I'm very grateful for. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Priya, for sharing your journey and how uh, it's movement practice to meet a lot of parts within you. And uh, in your journey earlier, you did not know how what to do with that or what do these emotions even mean and how the course uh, kind of brought in that seeing, noticing and holding of the whole, whole experience uh, that you were having. So thank you for sharing your journey. And uh, if you have uh, further questions after this session, Priya will be the one answering uh, and supporting you in that. So uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, now I'd just like to invite Manisha Mahaldar. Uh, she is a dance movement therapy practitioner. Uh, she also brings in the integrated approach to her dance movement therapy practice with mindfulness, Buddhist philosophy. Um, and she is the founder of Onik. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Manisha. Uh, and would love to hear from her. She just graduated from the course last year. Uh, so a lot of fresh learnings. Uh, yes, Manisha, please. Uh, I welcome you. Thank you, Kushali, and uh, hello, everyone. Um, I feel really happy to uh, be here. I think it's uh, it's been a while um, where I have uh, come together in this community. I think there is always, I, I am based in Pune, so I experienced this course in person, and that's something that stayed back with me. Not to say that it's a hybrid model and online will be any less, but uh, I have to say that uh, it was um, it, it was a very enriching experience for me. And although it's just been I graduated last year, it already feels that it's a very uh, integrated part of my personal and professional life. And um, I I. I'm amazed how in my practice and in my personal life, I am witnessing that I'm seeing to use the same principles, be it listening, being staying moment to moment and allowing that internal movement to emerge. I think it's been a beautiful process uh, witnessing that change in myself as a person and when I even hold space. And uh, I think now that has become my primary way of uh, holding space as well. And in, because I feel there is, there is so much of allowing in that and, um, and this, this beautiful path that has stayed back with me from the course is waiting. And, and the meaning of silence, uh, which I was very unaware of um, because we we definitely learned a lot about how, what waiting, what important, what is the importance of waiting and how uh, to even witness even the urges when we want to step in, when we, when we are becoming aware of when we are stepping back and being in that embodied attunement and what is happening for the person who's holding space and also for the person who is speaking. Uh, I think that is something I really take back from, uh, from, this, uh, from this course. Um, when uh, I, I used to practice mindfulness before as well in some sort of meditation and um, different ways, but of course the Mindfulness is so vast and I wanted to just 
um, get a taste of like the how to like get a taste of how it is in a structured format in a course and how you can also implement that in a practice. And I chose to start with the mindfulness based embodied listening. And I was contemplating, should I do this two year, two year program or not? I'm like, let's just take baby steps first and then and let that emerge again, be with it really moment to moment and not rush into it. Um, and uh, I'm so grateful and very happy that I did make that decision because it has changed the way I, I, I look at things. I, I witness things uh, with myself and my environment around. Um, even though I, uh, you know, I, my journey began on this path where I, I chose movement because I'm also a dancer and movement came very naturally to me. So I, I did my, my course in my certification in dance movement therapy, where of course there is mindfulness is a part of it as well. But um, there was always this feeling of um, wanting to stay with stillness and and how I can integrate that into my movement personal practice and and when I'm holding space for for clients and um, I was able to learn that through mind through mindfulness um, like if I have to share um, an example of somehow I I end up using this more in my individual individual clients and how I see I integrate in a beautiful transition into it is, for example, you know, um, if by, by using mindfulness, when we are, I'm able to bring the attention of the client to the place that a body part that is calling out to them before a movement, a big movement can really happen. Because many a times I have found that movements an authentic movement, listening to the body cues can come with a lot of judgment. So just attuning and bringing them in touch with their body with the help of mindfulness, the internal sensations, once they become okay with that, becomes a very easy bridge uh, progression to lead that into movement. Um, for example, if if their neck is calling out to them, there is some tension or sensation there. Once that attention goes there, I think listening to the body cue to move that becomes easier than to suddenly get that jump into movement is what I have, I have understood in my, when I, when I have integrated mindfulness and let that into movement. And I feel um, that becomes a very um, smoother bridge to go into it. Yeah. Um, I think in this course, uh, it really equipped me to hold space one on one. And as Sandy was also saying, the counseling and the counseling, all the approaches which we learned, I think there was. It was much more than I think what I was comprehending or what I was expecting. So I received much more, and and um, and as I think Priya and Sarah said, the the safety and the container that Sandy and the entire just being group of people they they initiate or they make. I think. It, it allows that experience to come forth, you know? And, and I, I, I remember there was, um, there was a module we did on grief. Um, I think when Sarah was sharing some part and I went back to that part when it was really, really impactful for me and how um, to be able to stay with your grief, and I was able to do that for myself. I think that allowed, that allows me to over, even hold grief for my clients. And I think um, we did this in a circle uh, and it was, I, I think it was, 
a very in-depth, very intense, and very enriching experience, which I still take back. So thank you. Thank you, Sandy, for that. And uh, I have only beautiful memories and, and already uh, trying to think about what my next um, progression or path on mindfulness can be. And thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Manisha. Uh, and thank you for bringing in the uh, point of stillness, that waiting, that allowing, uh, the silence, uh, that is also a core of a important part of the practice and that insight into how uh, your learnings from the course shows up in your dance movement therapy practice and uh, how it really supports the client as well. That was truly very insightful. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and lastly, now I would like to uh, invite Rahul Patil. Um, he is the director at Halliburton Technology Center. Um, again, a very different field and a very different space. And uh, truly very curious to hear from you, Rahul, uh, how it shows up in your work. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Kushal. Thanks, Kushal. You're able to hear me? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning, dear friends. Uh, my name is Rahul Patil, and I'm leading the Halliburton Technology Center in Pune. Uh, I think uh, I have around close to 200 employees. So uh, you can imagine the anxiety and stress I am like uh, taking up every day. Uh, so this journey started like a few years back when uh, I was doing an executive MBA at Texas A&M. And, &M. and uh, uh, on one particular day, our finance professor came and he just switched off the light. And he said that, okay, today we are not going to uh, learn anything about the finance, but you have to just sit back close your eyes and just listen to your body, what it says. Okay. And it was my first uh, uh, interaction with that kind of experience. And there were around 23 other executives were there with me. And uh, after that 30 minute session, everyone experience, uh, share their experience. And it was altogether a very different experiences. And that's when like that curiosity started in my mind that, okay, what, this is all about and uh, uh, after one or two years then I started searching uh, this world mindfulness and I came across the just being center and applied for that particular course and uh, like a uh, uh, very honestly I will tell you that like uh, during the first module I failed that like okay whether I'm out of place in this class because I'm totally a non-psychological background I was uh, even today, I don't understand too many words about the psychology. Uh, but then as the course unfolds, like uh, after module two, module three, then I got that, that sensation that, oh, there is a more there in it for me. And uh, I started like, uh, uh, I started understanding a lot of other things in the sense like uh, the beauty of this course is uh, it's a non-judgmental and uh, this definitely help us improving awareness of feelings and thoughts. I was able to understand how to connect with emotions, deeper level sensations, and the feeling of oneness. And uh, above all the psychological safety, how important it is that I came to know through the role plays and other things. There, there were several other activities in the class, which uh, I personally learned a lot from like a role plays, peer sessions, and uh, I got uh, so many good colleagues whom I can trust and whom I can share. In fact, uh, just two weeks back, I was uh, pinging Manisha that let's have a, a peer session. And, uh, and that is the beauty that like everyone trusts each other and you can share freely with your colleagues. So today I'm going to tell you that how it helped me personally and professionally Although I'm going to talk in a very plain 
language, not in the psychological terminology. But uh, I personally learned two things from this course. One is the lis uh, my listening ability has been improved tremendously. And second, it is helping me to certain extent on the decision making. So last year, like uh, I was uh, getting opportunity to uh, relocate to US because this is the last position for me uh, in Pune. And uh, on one hand, this lucrative opportunity was there. On the other hand, like uh, some fi family priorities were there. Like my mother is alone here. So I just was not able to take a decision on what should I do. And uh, during the peer sessions, I shared this with many of my colleagues. And slowly, I started getting that, oh, what decision I should take. Okay. Each time when I used to uh, tell it to my peers about this, something new uh, aspect used to come in front. And finally, I took the decision that, okay, I will stay back. And uh, uh, like uh, I'm not regretting that decision. In fact, I feel proud of that decision. And uh, it, it really helped me to solve that uh, particular problem uh, in a very simple manner. Then like uh, professionally, it's helping me a lot from uh, like uh, by improving the listening ability. And I, I, I share I uh, share with you a, a small example. Like we are doing a corporate social responsibility with one of the hospitals in Pune, Denavat Mangeshkar Hospital. And uh, one day the administrator in DMH, she called me and she introduced me to uh, one of the parent, a three-year-old child parent. And... Uh, the he was like a porter on, uh, in uh, Kurla railway station and he was narrating me his story and what he told me that like uh, I'm like just earning it's a hand to mouth for me and uh, like my daughter used to get a, a fever quite often and uh, he used to take her, her to the nearby doctors they used to give her the crocin and other tablets but it used to she used to feel good for some time and then again she used to get the fever. So this cycle was continuing on and off. And then somebody recommended him to go to the big hospital and uh, that's how he landed up in DMH. Uh, not having any money and uh, like uh, Halliburton, our company was uh, supporting him and her daughter got diagnosed with the blood cancer. But uh, they came in time so she's now fit and fine. In fact, this August, she will start going to the nursery and other things. And she's completely cured now. So uh, he was like, a, when narrating this story, he was totally into the tears. And he was telling me that people like you should be in the politics because uh, you are giving me so much time and you are listening to me so patiently. And it was a compliment for me. Okay, Like uh, I was able to like listen to him for almost 10 minutes and like without uttering a single word, but just like a, just soaking in that experience. And that's how that I felt that that change has happened in person day to me. Even like when employee comes to me for the promotion cases and other their problems. Now I listen to them better. And I felt that like a, uh, after listening, they also feel better. Okay. There, there will not be always a solution for the problem which they come, but yeah, they also get the feeling that, okay, he is at least listening to us and uh, it is helping me in a day-to-day -day job. So uh, for those people who are not from the psychology background, if they want to explore something unique and different and uh, uh, like uh, this is the right course and I personally gain a lot of things, Okay, though I'm not able to still like uh, learn the psychology completely, but still like uh, I took a lot from this particular uh, course. And uh, thanks to all the just being staff, Sandy, uh, and all other teachers, my colleagues and peers for providing me this uh, important uh, training and teaching. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Rahul, for bringing in uh, the lens of how it looks like in a very different space, which is not from the psychology background. and. Um, sharing how the peer sessions and peer support still continues 
for you after the yeah. course as well. And uh, it was lovely to hear how uh, the whole process of listening uh, and listening to yourself in the presence of the other as well as brought in a lot of insights with regards to decision making. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, being able to support uh, the members in your team, your colleagues, your employees uh, as yeah. well better. Uh, thank you for bringing in all the sharings, uh, Sara, Manisha, Priya, and Rahul today. And uh, we'll now open it up. Um, um, everyone, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to unmute and ask, or you can also type on chat. Yeah, I'd just like to say something, I think, uh, listening to everyone uh, and thank you for uh, sharing all of that. And I think those of you who are also contemplating, um, you know, joining or doing something like this, I think for each one of us, there is a, there is an inner impetus, there is an inner kind of already a movement um, a yearning for something like this. And I think more and more we find that um, there are those people who find their way to the course. And so I would say to kind of see what that is for you. Um, what's your, uh, what's that inner impetus, that inner uh, movement that is that's there. Yeah, so Dorothy, we are talking about the one year course here. The two year program is the presence oriented psychotherapy program. Uh, we recently did an open house around that. And if we have your email address, maybe we can share that recording with you if you're interested in the two-year course. Both the courses are on similar, uh, it's on similar grounds, um, just that the two years looks at more of the therapeutic aspects more overtly. Yeah. Uh, when does the course start? Uh, the, so the course begins, the uh, modules begin in August. There is a pre program before that that begins in June, which is more of the mindfulness practice that we just come together as a community and practice. Yeah. Wanted to share that Sara and Manisha had to leave because of certain uh, circumstances. Um, yeah, but we still have Rahul and Priya here and uh, Sandy as well. Um, hi, this is Shreya. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure, Shreya. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi. So I'm um, somebody who's considering joining the course. Uh, so I just wondered uh, if there was any um, experience or um, something to share on as one decides to come into this course. What kind of space or uh, preparation, uh, for the lack of a better word, uh, do we need to have in mind as we sort of commit to this going forward. I think, uh, Shreya, what uh, is needed is to be present during the days of the training. So they are full day trainings and one needs to be there. That's three days once a month, uh, three days, and then it alternates between two days and three days. And then in between, there is the coursework. Uh, you know, uh, so keeping aside 
about three to four hours a week and it goes smoothly then because after every module to deepen into that learning from the module, then there is the application of it through peer sessions or later on client sessions. And one needs to document that. So that does take time. So, you know, just, just arranging that time and that space in your life for uh, the course learnings, that would be helpful. Apart from that, I don't think there is a preparation of sorts, like we do have the pre-program where we are really uh, developing and instilling this uh, practice of mindfulness for ourselves as we begin, because that's a key component of the course. Um, and uh, so to have a regular mindfulness practice is also what we are seeking to do through the course. All right, thank you. Thank you, Shreya. Is there anything else or it would be just nice to just hear from uh, all of you just what's here and just any question that is there on your mind and maybe related or not related just where are you on your path what you're curious about Yeah, thank you, Ms. Yes. Uh, so I think Kushali has shared the link. Um, so one can fill that up. There are more details on the website as well. Uh, that is just being center.com. And or you can just write to us at just being center at gmail.com if there are more questions. Um, so once you fill up the registration form, then there's also a uh, just a one-on-one, -on -one, just a conversation, just to be clearer on, you know, many different aspects involved and if you have any questions. Yeah. And then just the, uh, the registration process that you complete. Yeah, yeah Prabhi, yes. did you want to say something? Yeah, yeah is this... Uh... I remember doing the, the very short program of five days with you way back in 2012. Uh, yes. Yes. Being a counselor myself, I very, very clearly, I, I still use a lot of the tools that I learned in that small short program, very particularly the mindfulness, uh, holding uh, uh, very often uh, what I uh, help, what has helped me, help me and help me help others is being present to what is happening in the moment, mm -hmm. and that's something that I that I picked up very strongly, and just being with what is, mm -hmm. and I found that very very helpful in progressing with uh, with a person, with a client, even in group therapy. Yeah. Yeah. So I still I still use what I've learned at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Praveen. Good to see you. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Yes, of course, Anirudh. We, uh, I do remember first batch, yes, uh, of this uh, course. Uh, Anirudh was part of it and uh, many others. I think uh, it was a group of 16, the first uh, ones who joined. Uh, that was way back in 2016. Yeah. Uh, yes. 
And so we've had quite a number of uh, patches after that. Yes, yes, Om. Yeah, so I'm Om from Pune. I'm uh, practicing psychotherapy and uh, medicine. And uh, I'm very happy to know that this thing is existing, first of all. I've been outside of Pune for a long time, 25 years mm. I was out of Pune. Mm. So, and I'm very happy to know that this exists. And uh, I'm also extremely happy to note the, the students and you know people talking about mindfulness and being present in the situation and things arising. And uh, really, I mean, I'm, I'm so touched, actually. And uh, uh, my path has been a bit different. I have been into Vipassana and all. And I learned with uh, that uh, father... Uh, Dick McHugh uh, and uh, I'm just hoping that somehow somewhere now the paths will come together and I'm basically looking for some kind of uh, weekly or monthly or whatever interaction to your open programs at the moment uh, I have been in student mode for long and I continue to remain in student mode but <laughs> so already I am booked for a number of student activities uh, so I'm just wanting at the moment that if you have anything open, maybe some sharing circle or meditation circle or anything like that, then I yeah. uh, definitely like to be part of that and then see yeah. how the things go. We do have a, we do engage in a lot of um, uh, things for the community. One of it is the Saturday mindfulness practice circle, it really started as responding to when COVID was happening, just to the need that was there to gather as a community and practice together. And uh, yeah, um, so that still goes on once a week on Saturday, 10 to 11. Okay. Um, so that's one aspect and of course we do keep having uh, some workshops or events and if you're on our mailing list then you receive uh, all that information of when things happen yeah. yes it's nice to be in touch uh, in some way with uh, this whole thing even if we are not able to you know make create the time and space for uh, the full Years program. And in any way, if I can be utilized, we most feel the I'm absolutely free to refer anyone or any any way I can be useful. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. All right, then maybe we can close here for uh, Kushali. Is that okay? Thank you again, uh, every one of you who uh, turned up this morning. Yeah. I think Dorothy is unmuting. I'm not sure if she wants to share. Dorothy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dorothy? Yeah. Do you wish to share? Me? Dorothy, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you, but can you hear me? Yes, we can yeah. hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So actually, uh, um, I really wanted to do this course, but uh, you know, as uh, Om sir is also saying, I insist on you know some short uh, duration course because I've already enrolled myself uh, in my PhD. So I I would not be able to kind of you know do justice even if I enroll. So I still want to be in touch and continue doing this practice somehow physically. I am also from Pune, so um, I kind of you know uh, want you guys to consider that if you can do something you know on a on a physical basis uh, i am a part of just being uh, on a saturday circle but i often and on miss that sometime i do uh, you know kind of but if it's physical and if i can make it 
you know once in a month or two in twice in a month whatever that you decide and physically we can come and practice that uh, it will be something really great maybe after 2 3 years i plan i really plan to do this course but for that till that time i really want to get into this practice myself yeah sure dogdi thank you maybe we could consider ways in which people can come more to the center practice yeah because as uh, praveen sir uh, praveen said you know that it's a, it was and he remembers that we would like also to have the same similar kind of experience and <laughs> and we should take it from there you know so yeah. we don't want to lose it on anything probably at this point of time i cannot uh, you know uh, contribute so much of ours because i've already doing something and it will be injustice to that also and this also but at the same time i don't want to miss out on my years on doing this so sure. you know we also uh, are also trying to create other uh, kind of not just learning opportunities but also um, just engagement as a community Correct. so Correct. like um, recently we started the book reading circle it's still going on there are two more two more uh, sections that are remaining so that's something that one can be a part of so we do we do try to create these uh, various opportunities in which people can come together and uh, experience taste um, and also engage with one another so kushal says you can come to the center next saturday the for the book reading circle yeah. okay okay I strongly Great. object to the bad word used for me. So, so yeah. what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. If there's uh, nothing for now, uh, we'll be in touch and keep in touch uh, through email, or we'll be in touch. Uh, you know you will you will be getting uh, what we are doing and how you can participate and also information about the uh, courses the one year and the two years so thank you very much and thank about you this Ashali. book reading uh, book reading circle uh, it is what, online or what? it's hybrid so it okay. can you can attend online and in person i have got a lot of unread books <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you, especially Rahul, Priya, uh, and uh, Manisha and Sara. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. everyone. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Have a great day. Great weekend. Bye.